Okay, question number 10. The curve C satisfies the equation given. X times e to the power of 5 minus 2y minus y equals 0. X and y are both greater than 0. The point P with coordinates 2e minus 1, 2 lie on C. The tangent to C cuts the tangent to C at P cuts the x axis at A and cuts the y axis at B. Given that O is origin, find the exact area of the triangle OAB, give your answer in its simplest form. So the answer has to be exact. Okay. So we have to basically find the straight line, which is the tangent to C at the point P, and then see where that line cuts the x and the y axis, and then make a triangle between the origin and those two points and find the area of that triangle. Okay, seven marks here. So the first objective is to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point P. So we need to find the face basically we need to find the equation of the tangent to C at P, to the curve at P. Okay, so we have to, that means we have to uh, find the gradient. We need a point on the line, which we have. The point C is on the tangent. We need its gradient. So we have to find the gradient of this function. So we've got x times e to the power of 5 minus 2y minus y equals 0. So we could, um, Okay, what we could do is, because you see we have x and, and we've got e to the power of something with y in it, I can make y the subject, but then there will be, still be y in here. So I have to use what's called implicit differentiation. Okay, so um, for this term, I can call this part u and this part v. So I'll just make a little separation here. Okay, so I'm going to call this part u, so I can say u is equal to x. Whoops, I need the pen mark. So u is, come on pen, so u is equal to x and v is equal to e to the power of 5 minus 2y. So u dash is equal to x and v dash, well if I differentiate this, it's e to the power of something. Okay, so it's e to the power of something. So it's e to the power of the same thing. That's when you differentiate e to the power of something, it stays as it is. But there's a function inside the function, which is 5 minus 2y. So I have to multiply it by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, the differential of 5 minus 2y is minus 2 with respect to y. Okay, but I'm, I'm differentiating with respect to x. Okay, so because I'm differentiating with respect to x, I differentiate this at, as normal, and then I multiply by dy dx. That's called implicit differentiation. And you have a term, sorry, what am I doing? u dash is 1. <laughs> differential of x is 1. Whoops. So u dash is 1. So the, the, the difficult one I was dealing with and the basic one I put 1. I made a mistake. That's 1. And v dash is going to be given by this e to the power of 5 minus 2y. So when you differentiate e to the power of something, it stays as it is. But then if there's a function inside the function, you have to multiply by the differential of that. But as that function is in terms of y, we have to multiply by dy dx at the end. So v dash, if you simplify this, will be minus 2 times e to the power of 5 minus 2y times dy dx. Okay, so I can, when I differentiate a product. I use, I'm use. i going to use a product rule, so I'm going to do this times this plus that times that. Okay, so I'm going to have e to the power of 5 minus 2y times 1, which stays as it is, plus, and because there's a minus here, I'm going to, I'm going to write minus because I have plus minus. So minus, whoops, come on, Ben. Let me just, that's 2y. So it'll be minus, and I'll have 2x, because I'm multiplying these together, e to the power of 5 minus 2y, okay, uh, dy dx, and then I have this minus y, I have to also differentiate with respect to x. Well, that's going to give me, how do you differentiate y with respect to x? It becomes dy dx. And 0 differentiated with respect to x becomes 
stay zero. Any constant will become zero. All right, so now, because I know the point on the line where I'm trying to find the gradient is it's 2e to the power of minus 1, which is like 2 over e, and 2 for the y coordinate. Is that right? Yeah. I can just substitute these values into this equation. So I don't have to find dy dx as I don't have to rearrange it for dy dx. I can just substitute the values in and it'll make my numbers easier. So I'll have e to the power of 5 minus 2 times y, which is 2, minus 2 times x, which is 2 times 2 over e, times e to the power of 5 minus 2 times 2, minus, and then that's times dy dx, minus dy dx equals 0. So this is e to the power of 1, which is e. And this is going to give me minus 4 over e times e. Okay, they're both to the power of 1, so they're going to cancel out. Times dy dx minus dy dx equals 0. Okay, so those e's cancel out. So I end up with e and equals, if I just, that's going to be 5 dy dx on this side, isn't it? Minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5, then add that to both sides, so equals 5 dy dx. Therefore, dy dx is e over 5. Okay. Now, that means it has a positive gradient. Okay. That doesn't really make sense to me because it says x is greater than 0. Anyway, let's, we'll do all that later. So we know the gradient is e over 5. And we know it passes through the point, which was 2 over e and 2. That's the point p. Okay, that's 2e to the power of minus 1, which is 2 over e and 2. Okay, so let's now use the equation of a straight line. y minus y1 equals x, uh, sorry, equals m times x minus x1. The gradient times x minus x1. So we can say y minus 2 equals e over 5 times x minus 2 over e. So let's multiply both sides by 5. So we have 5y minus 10, so that 5 will be gone, and then you multiply by e, so you have e x minus 2. So that's, we can keep it like that because we want to basically find where it crosses the, the x axis and the y axis. So it says um, it crosses the x axis at the point A. So the point A is where it crosses the x axis when y is equal to 0. So you're going to have minus 10 equals e x minus 2 so therefore um, minus 2 over 5 sorry no no that was minus I multiplied by 5 yeah so you're gonna have um, what, am I what I'm doing here so you have therefore you're gonna have minus 2 plus minus 10 plus 2 which is minus 8 so you have e x equals minus 8 so x equals minus 8 over e. And we know b is when x is 0. When x is 0, this becomes 0. So you have 5y minus 10, so 5 here, is equal to minus 2. Let me just carry on down here because I've run out of space. OK, so that means 5y is equal to minus 2 plus 10 which is 8 so y is equal to 8 over 5 so basically this will look something like that this um, if we just make a little sketch of it well there's something strange here that I don't get anyway I'll explain that in a minute but x is minus 8 over e okay so x is somewhere here. 
Okay, minus 8 over E. And Y is 8 over 5, somewhere over here. Okay, so this is the line that passes through the X and the Y axis at the points A and B. Okay, so that's the point A and that's the point B. And this is the origin. And we want to find the area of this triangle, A, O, B. So the question says, find the area of the triangle, A, O, B. Okay, so we have a half times a base times a height. So the area is going to be a half times the base, which is 8 over E. We just need this magnitude times the height, which is 8 over 5. Okay, so the 2 cancel with the 8 gives you 4. 4, 8 is so 32. 32 over 5e. That's in its exact form. That's units squared. Okay. Um, now, what I am a bit dubious about in this question is that the beginning says x is greater than 0. And our x value came out as minus 8 over e, which is negative. Let me just refer to the mark scheme. Okay, the mark scheme for the same question, okay, which is question number 10. Let's see if we did it right. Okay, we had um, the gradient was we put E over 5 right. Okay, so we got that bit right. And we said that it goes to the point A. Where's it gone? Oops, I've gone too far down. It goes to the point A at minus 8 over E. Yeah, so this is weird. Okay, because it says X is greater than 0 at the beginning, so this will give you a negative value because E is positive, it's 2.8 something. Um, we got the right answer, 32 over 5E, yeah. So we got the right answer, but there's something strange in this question. Um, because it says here x is greater than 0, yet we got an answer where x was negative. And the mark scheme has that same answer. Anyway, uh, that might have confused some people in the exam, actually, because they thought they've got it wrong. X has to be positive. Because obviously, if x and y are both positive, then it should go like this to be able to make an area with the x-axis. Because if it's a positive gradient, Okay, it won't be enclosed. It won't have a triangle that's enclosed. So it has to have a negative gradient if X and Y are both positive. Okay, but this is how it actually is, something like that. Anyway, um, we've got the same answer as the mark scheme, although I would have been in the real exam, if that was a real exam, I would have been a bit dubious. Now, um, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, the answer we got is the same as the mark scheme. That's fine. But there's a little doubt in my mind. Maybe somebody who understands it better, might be able to explain, but I think um, I might contact the examining board and ask them about that question. Okay, thank you for watching.